Leave me on my mojo, man. It's all right. Let's just wait till. <clears throat> this is take two, guys. <clears throat> take two. Okay, yeah. All right, guys. Welcome back to the IQ Project. I know it's been a while since we we done one of these. We're actually trying to get back to it. I'm right here with uh, one of our artists, Tony G and Ricky Tat. Yep. Uh, I'm Josh A12. Also Josh. So today we're actually gonna be introducing uh, one of our artists, our newer artist, Tony. Um, but first, here's Ricardo trying to explain a little bit what happened on 2020. You wanna go, go for that? Yeah, so 2020, man, is for us, how did it affect us? Of course, it made us, it shut us down. Um, you know, regulations, they told everybody shut down. Of course, you know, in February, March, we didn't know what the virus was gonna do, <coughs> so we completely shut down, listened to all the regulations. We closed down for about three months. But then, you know, we got to a point where we were still having a high demand of clients that wanted to work with us. So we decided to go by appointment only, close down the doors and just worked one on one. Um, as of many shops around here started doing. Um, but we closed the doors. We didn't let anybody in. We, you know, stuck to wearing masks, uh, sanitizer, temperature check. And um, luckily there was a high demand that we just took on day by day few people in the shop and we made it happen and so it's been a rough ride but we appreciate everybody that trust us and wanted to continue getting work from us because man it it, it pulled us through you know um, our bills were still needed to get paid appreciate and that. we really appreciate everybody each and every one that watches this that came in we appreciate all the support we greatly appreciate it so much and today we were you know we started some uh, podcasts before and we we're going to interview our um, other two artists that we have we've done it with uh josh over here and with myself mm -hmm. but we never got the chance to interview our other guys today we're gonna take the time to do it with tony right here tell us your um tony instagram. G. all right so my instagram is at tony g dot ta2 tattoo he's been uh here since uh full time since when october full -time since october. Since october and um really good guy really good vibes with us and we want you guys to get to know a little bit of what He's about his background, so you guys can appreciate, you know, the love that he has for tattooing, and um, he can better explain it, you know. Um, you guys he, came, you already talked to him. He, he's, he's really good at communicating with everyone that walks in and out the shop, but um, it's a little more, more of a one-on-one -on -one right now. And um, right. the way we came across him was uh, he started contacting us through Instagram and saying what's up, commenting on our work. Um, we saw that he had an interest. At the time, we weren't looking for artists. Uh, we had already a set amount of artists, but he was persistent. Uh, then we went to Golden State, right? We went to Golden State in, last yeah. year in January, and he came to our booth, chopped it up with us for a little bit. We got to know him. We're like, man, this guy is cool. He's hungry, and we already had talked to him through Took a through seminar with him as well. He, cool. Josh took a seminar. You took a seminar? Yeah, I took a seminar with him. Yeah. And so that's how we got to know him, and uh, by chance and by opportunity, we decided to give him a chance. And how's it been going for you so far, man? So far, so good. Yeah? Yeah, you know, I started here uh, July part-time, because I had a full-time job. Um, I had been at that job for about three and a half years already. What was that full-time job? That full-time job was a warehouse job. You don't want to mention that name. Yeah, packing aluminum. <laughs> so it was, it, was, it was pretty heavy work, you know? But um, long hours, six days a week. So I did that for about three and a half years. And I was uh, tattooing on the side, like basically mostly on Sundays on my day off. And, um, and so I wasn't doing too much tattooing here and there. So that had been for about a year. And when I started here part-time, I would do it on my my spare hours but it was getting kind of heavy for me to do both i was uh i was here and i was just like looking at the time like i gotta go home and get to sleep because i'm gonna have a long day at work tomorrow you know so remember that schedule was horrible yeah was like what 3 a.m yeah yeah so about six, 60 plus hours a week there so um mm. so in october um it had already been on my mind for a while you know like uh me uh, beating myself up over the fact that I never gave tattooing a, a hundred percent a chance, you know, to do something with it. So in October, I took another seminar. Me and Josh went to a seminar out in Vegas, mm -hmm. and it was really inspirational. You know, we got to see some of the best artists out there, or one of the one of the best shops, and um, it was inspirational. I came back fired up, 
and I decided to quit that job after three and a half years and give this uh, give this a try. And now he's full time with us. He's been consistent. As man, as soon as he got in here, I felt like he was he was like a sponge. He was learning from me and Josh, and he was just learning the <coughs> the professional side of being inside a shop because it's not just at a garage. You know, you gotta act different. You gotta the systems gotta be different. And uh, I think he learned a lot, right? You know, what's funny is that when he told me he's not coming back, he just well we're we're having dinner right in Vegas. He's like, I'm not going back Monday. <laughs> Like, like, back to work, right? Back to that. Back to that yeah. and I, job. And I, and I, and I sealed the deal by, by booking an appointment on that Monday morning. So there was no way I could go back. I had an appointment that day. So so we appreciate that, you know, you're trusting us as a shop, man, for, you know, for your livelihood. Especially during sure, COVID sure. hours. I mean, honestly, we told but, you it was, was going to be, it's your decision at yeah. that point. Like who, who leaves their, you know, stable job? You know, working X amount of hours, you're getting that set pay to follow your dream. And we we, we didn't take that lightly, man. We told him, whenever you're ready, uh, whenever you're ready, pull the trigger. We'll back you up 100, and we'll make sure that we could help you. I mean, he has to help himself, too. But we made him, sh um, you know, we assured him that we we could help him, right? And I yeah, think right. we did. And But overall, you've been working, right? You've been working consistently. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we got a little ahead. Tell us a little bit about you, man. We want you know, we want them to know what your background is. You know, how did you get into tattooing? Why did you get into tattooing? You know. Okay, so, so I started drawing. As far as I can remember, I liked drawing. As a kid, I would sit in the living room and, you know, pick a corner, pick a side, and and just draw whatever I saw in front of me. Draw the mm -hmm. couches, draw the the TV, draw everything. Try to make it look good. Try to make it look real. So. I used to like drawing the uh, cartoon characters, whatever I used to watch, Pokemon cards. I used to blow those up on a piece of paper and tuck them in my folder, take them to school, you know, <laughs> do it for other kids. And um, so that was like as a seven, eight year old, you know what I mean? So, so was I that here it. in Fontana? Or? Yeah. 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 Here in Fontana. Oh, OK. Cool. So I grew up here in Fontana, went to school here. <clears> and um, so I stopped drawing maybe like for my teenage years. You know, I started hanging out more in the park, doing sports, doing uh, just doing other stuff, you know. So maybe like when I was 18, 19 years old, I started picking it up again through a friend who I saw him doing some work, some drawing work, and he would draw a lot of portraits. And it just caught my attention, you know, and, and he encouraged me. He said, go ahead, man, try it out, you know. So, so I started drawing some portraits. I liked it. I liked everything about drawing portraits, you know. And he was already tattooing at the time. So, so... um I kind of got intrigued, you know, and, and, and he told me, you know, I know where you could get a, a kit. I went and bought the kit, started practicing on myself, my brothers, my friends. Where'd you buy the kit at? The kit was bought at uh, Worldwide Tattoo Supply in <laughs> City of Industry. So that's a really well-known spot around here. And uh, it, was a, it was a cheap kit. It was about 100 bucks for the whole thing. But um, not about that China pack, huh? Yeah, uh, so I feel like that's where we got our stuff. I think a too. lot of people started there, man. They yeah. were like, to be honest, they were the place to go. That was killer. Amazon wasn't selling that much stuff yet. Yeah, Amazon was. eBay there. was, but you had to delay it. So they were the place to go nobody ten years was, ago. You know. Yeah, nobody will sell you a machine if you're an licensed artist back then. Yeah, they they didn't give a fuck. So yeah. they would. So appreciate you. Yeah. Appreciate. <laughs> shout out to worldwide. worldwide. <laughs> get your stuff better now. Yeah. We can re go get more. No, just kidding. <laughs> See, the difference is you bought the whole kit, the whole like beginning kit and everything. I remember when. You took me there. Yeah. You're like, all you need is two machines and a power pack. Well, see, that's... So, when, like, as I was saying, like, you know, I stated before, when I learned, um, I didn't jump into a kit. It didn't make sense because at the time, we didn't have all the fancy cartridges and stuff yeah. like that. Now, it was, it was the needles through through a tube, and I didn't have an autoclave, so I was doing it on my home. So, yeah. I was like, I'm trying to avoid the autoclave. You know, that's an expensive investment. I wanted to get going, so I bought those disposable tubes so I just started a little research and, and I put the stuff together, you know, yeah. where, you know, you bought the whole kit and some of the right. stuff you didn't even use, right? A lot of the stuff. Like the metal tubes. Yeah, and yeah. Them. So a few months later, I wasn't using anything in that kit anymore, except for the box mm -hmm. to hold my new stuff in. It's you a nice know? little box. Yeah. yeah, it was a nice box. My mom used to call me a doctor when I used to walk out <laughs> with that box. <laughs> I, used to walk, I used to walk out Dr. with that Tony? briefcase. Yeah, she's like, Tony? yeah, yeah, el doctor ya se va a ir a trabajar. <laughs> 
Yeah, so you bought the box, you bought the kit. Well, how did you feel kit. when you bought it, bro? I felt good, man. Yeah. I felt ready. I watched that DVD. It came with a DVD on how to tattoo. Oh. I watched that DVD, man, and it was like it's ugly little dragon tattoo, man. But I, <laughs> it wasn't I the Frank of no, I, I thought it came out so good, and and it was crazy. I was trying to replicate that work, you know. So, Would you do your first tattoo? Yeah, I was gonna ask that. Um. Okay, so my first tattoo was. Probably even before I bought that kit. So, well, we shouldn't even say it. Like, talk about that one. No, um, yeah, my first <laughs> Talk about it, bro. Okay, <laughs> let him know. My let first know. one, my okay. first, first one was, I had a, I had a friend before, even before that, some other dude had bought a kit, right? And, um, and we used to tattoo in the backyard. That's where I got my first tattoos, you know, in the backyard mm -hmm. of my house. Imagine that. And, and yeah, man, we were, drinking having some beers you know and i one of the dudes wanted to get tattooed he was already all drunk he wanted to get tattooed and i i raised my hand and i did it i did it for him nice. it was all it was a whole how'd you feel when you did it like did you said what the fuck like this is dope this is or it was like whatever because when i did it my first time i did it in a garage like it, the guy was like a homemade machine and i did a uh, a tres puntos on a guy you know the typical <laughs> 19 this was and this was back With in 1990 just a needle no, it was a machine. It was oh. a made, homemade machine <laughs> that we put together. He showed me how. And we we got the ink. They were selling ink at the time, but I don't know where I got it. And it was just the tres puntos. And, and then I heard my mom say, hey, get over here. So I fucking got scared. And that was it. This was back in 96. Damn. Oh, but damn. yeah, so anyways. So, I, you know, it, it didn't really hit me because I guess mentally I wasn't there. Yeah. But um, yeah. how well, did you feel? No, same with me. Same with me. Uh, um, I didn't even think about ever being a tattoo artist. I didn't think I'd be doing it again. It was just right then and there that one time and gave that dude uh, his first tattoo and came out pretty messed up, to tell you the truth. <laughs> so fast forward now, you got the kid. Did you have like people waiting, like saying, you know, or did yeah. you just say, yeah, fuck it, I had, it, I'll I do had it. a couple friends. I had my brother who who um, sacrificed his legs and both his legs are all tattooed front and back for me. A bunch of old work. My legs are all done. How do you see, or how do you feel when you see that right now? I feel like we should have waited. <laughs> I feel like we should have waited. He could have had a such better work, man. So I yeah, mean, and you've tattooed a lot of your work, huh? Yeah, on Most, yourself. I say about uh, seventy-five percent of my tattoos are, are done by me. That's crazy. I, I've never met somebody that's tattooed themselves so much. You know, like here and there. You know, but that's crazy, man. I have, but yours. <laughs> I never. I mind. never knew someone that tattooed their stomach just by looking in the mirror and looking like <laughs> <Yeah>. this. <laughs> I've done my side in the mirror. I did my lower stomach in the mirror. I did it in my arms. I did, and did a lot of my thighs, my legs. So you started getting into the groove of it. You, every <coughs> once in a while, you tattoo. What, what happens next? Mm. So I, I get an apprenticeship where my buddy was already tattooing. So I get an apprenticeship there, and it didn't, it didn't, it didn't go very far. I, I um. I started uh, experimenting with drugs on the side, right? Mm. So at the time, I guess I wasn't mature enough to to look at it like, oh, man, I can make a career out of this. You know, I yeah. can really make some money out of this. How old were you at this time? I was 22. 22? I was about 22, yeah. So mm. so I started doing that and hanging out in the street instead. And um, mm. lo and behold, I end up in jail. So I ended up in jail for about four years. And in there, I did a little bit of tattooing whenever the guards would... Uh, would let us, you know, when we could uh, get away with it. And so I got out of jail. Two thousand legal in there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're mm. not supposed to. You get caught with a machine that's contraband, and you, you're getting more time, you know. Oh, man. So um, you did four years. Four years. So <laughs> I got out 2017, and as soon as I got out, maybe like less in less than a month, I already had that warehouse job I was telling you guys about. Mm. So the, that that um, that took a, a lot of my time. You know, so I didn't start tattooing again until maybe late 2018, around there. So what made you want to get back into it? Because, I mean, you already um, had a cushiony job that's going to pay you a set salary. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so when I was in jail, I was, that, like, my whole plan was, I'm going to get out and I'm going to start tattooing just, like, like crazy. You know, I was going to hit it, you know, hard, like, and um, it didn't happen like that. You know what I mean? I had to show my probation officer that I was working. I had to do it because I was staying at a sober living, and so I had to show all that proof, and, and that's what led me to the warehouse job. Mm -hmm. So 
little by little, I'm like, man, I want to get back into tattooing. And I delayed it for so long. And so about a year, year and a half later, I decided to, uh, to pick it up again. I bought some more, uh, some more uh, supplies. I bought the machines and everything online. Mm. And I started again. I tattooed my, my brother's friend. And so I tattooed him. And, and it wasn't even like, it wasn't consistent, you know. I did that one. Maybe like a month later, I did another one. And I mean, what really impressed me, honestly, um, was that line you did. That's what made me want to DM you and be like, hey, do you want to come in? You know, want to come in for, how long did that take you? Or what made you want to do that one? <clears throat> okay, so that tattoo you're talking about took me about 22 hours. And it was done in a three-day period. First day was about 11 hours. Back to back? Yeah, three days back to back. So first day was 11 hours. The second day we did about eight. And we had to stop. We had to stop because of my, my <clears throat> job that I had. I was going to, you know, get up early the next day and go to work. So so I had to stop after eight hours. And I had to come in on the third day for like four hours. So, yeah. And that's, so, that's something that she wanted uh, in memory of her dad. And at that point <clears throat> when you did that one, you know, I mean, that's a big dedication, three days back to back, like... While working a full-time job. What, you know, what uh, <clears throat> what made you push yourself to get to do that tattoo? Because that's a very dedicated piece. You know it was going to stand out. It's very time-consuming. It's very difficult to do that size. What happened in your mind? Like, what did you think? Like, okay, this is going to... I'm going to do this to test myself, or did something happen? Did you go to, like, a seminar prior to that or something? Yeah. Yeah, I did. So, I had already attended two seminars in uh january of last year so january, one of them that's where we met too yeah that's where i met josh at carlos torres seminar and that was a quick seminar but it was really good you know yeah. he gave a lot of knowledge um the next day i went to another seminar with uh, uh maco at bishop rotary and uh that was also really inspirational that was a full day seminar and yeah, man, I left those seminars fired up, man. You leave those those events, things like that, they, they really get you pumped up. So I just wanted to try different things, just push myself, you know? And I already knew I could do it because of the drawings I've done and, and, and the work that I was doing even before jail and all that stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. So so I knew I had something in there that I knew I could do it, you know? And, yeah, and to, not to cut you off, but that's what I do. Um <laughs> <laughs> What, I, what impressed me about you is, like, the art was there, you know what I mean? Like, I can see that you have the skill. Um, but what more impressed me is that you took risks that I have not even done in my 12 years, man. Like, you actually invested in yourself going to somebody that's a master, you know, because those seminars are not cheap. If you guys don't know, it's over. It's thousands of dollars at times, you know, to, to invest in yourself, to go and learn for how many hours? Two so hours? A whole eight, day. No, about, a whole about, day. About eight, ten hours. I personally never done that. Um, <clears throat> and when he told me he did it back to back, I was like, this guy's hungry, you know? And we, we have to see what's up with him because he's not talking about it. He's doing it. And how we approached us, too, he didn't come begging for a job, you know? Like, or saying, I, hey. I, I, I didn't even know? mention that. I no, he didn't even mention it, to be honest. He just, like, wanted to chop it up with us, got to know, see if we vibe. And he left a little, you know, a footprint in our mind about who Tony is. Yeah, it's funny. Know? It's like, yeah, like, I didn't, because I didn't even add you on Instagram that day. I I saw you popped up on one of those suggested things. I was like, who's this? Sounded familiar, because back then you had that long-ass name, Tony Fontana. <laughs> <laughs> and then Empire 1009. <laughs> I do tattoos.com. <laughs> Yeah. So I checked them out, and I was like, I, the first picture I saw was that line. Oh. I was like, oh, damn, that's just badass. Yeah. And then I recognized your picture of you, and that's when I realized, oh, I met this guy at that convention. So I was like, oh, I got it. Yeah, if you guys don't know what we're talking about, is if you guys go into his Instagram and, you know, about how many uh, pictures down, maybe about 20 pictures down, you'll see it's a big lion yeah. face with, with a the crown, crown, and it's on a thigh, and it's amazing. It's really badass, and... and um, yeah, we really liked it, and I think that, looking back, I and maybe you can uh, continue this on uh, more, is like, that was your showpiece to show somebody. It's like your portfolio highlight, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that helped us make that further decision. Not only were you, were you saying what's up to us every once in a while, you 
invested in time into your craft, which we saw, right. and then you came with that fire. You know, you didn't come with no yeah. hand stamp or something. You know what I mean? Like a small <laughs> rose or something. Because when we interviewed people for some positions here, um, there's people showing up saying they can tattoo. Later and then we would ask them, okay, show us, our pic- show us your pictures. They say, oh, well, I don't save my pictures. Or they were just bullshitting, straight out bullshitting. They wanted a job. One of them job. actually was using pictures of another artist we knew. Yeah, that so, <laughs> you know? So right. we caught bullshit when we see it, and he was no bullshit. He was about it. And, yeah. and again, he didn't ask for a job. He was just like, wanted to get to know us. And by chance, and by, it, it happened that he got here, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. So where were we at? I interrupted you, I know, so. Um, I forgot too. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're at right there after the convention. We went to the, oh, the, yeah, the convention. Yeah, yeah. So, so those seminars, man, they get you fired up. And after that, I just, I, I knew I, if I pushed it, I knew I could, um, I could, I could push out some good work and some good pieces, you know. And and at the time, I still. So what I was thinking was, okay, I'm gonna build my clientele out here and then go ask for a job at a shop. And it kind of. How did that it, turn out though? It, it didn't really work out that way because the clients that you get out tattooing at home and going to their house and tattooing, like they're just looking for good deals, you know what I mean? So you're, you're giving them cheap deals, but once you get to a shop and you raise your prices, it's like those people, like most of them don't want to come in and pay more, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So And that's a very good point that you said, you know, um, as clients, you guys don't see sometimes that his transition from tattooing out of his house to tattooing out of a shop prices have to change because not only is he uh paying his percentage to be here you know he's has he's providing a better environment for that client so naturally you know the prices have to go up it's just it's just business so the people that he thought were going to follow him because he was hooking them up didn't because they don't appreciate that you know it's not that they don't appreciate they don't know you know, right? Right. And yeah. it, is a, it is a more professional environment, you know? And I, I still have people ask me, like, hey, come to my house and, and tattoo me, you know? And and now I'm like, no, nah, man. Like, tattoo parties? Just tattoo um, parties. the simple fact that it, it it's just everything is here. The whole setup is here. And, and as a well, you tool, feel more comfortable tattooing here, right? Right. Before, I would have to, you know, like, have my stuff go and unpack somewhere. And, and sometimes I didn't know where I was going to set up. And the lighting was horrible. And... and we didn't have chairs to do it and, you know, things like that. So now it's like, no, I, I'd, rather, uh, I'd rather have you come here, you know what I mean? When you're coming here, you know you're coming to a sterile environment where when you go to someone's house, you don't know. It's more professional. You yeah, you don't know how it's, how it's going to look. You don't know the environment you're going to be working on. Sometimes mm-hmm. it could be even dirty. Yeah. I've been to, because I was doing it too. I've been to houses where you just see rats running around. <laughs> hey, but I needed to make that know, money. Dog. I needed to make that money, you know. <laughs> that was pretty bad. I don't yeah, know about that. <laughs> yeah, so hey, that's the pet. Don't worry. So okay, so <laughs> that's just my dog. He's deformed. Yeah. <laughs> Look, give, give, him some, give him some cheese. He'll walk, he'll walk away, dog. <laughs> No, so so it is a it's a lot more professional, you know. It's a lot more uh, comfortable. You're gonna get quality. You're gonna get a quality experience here now, you know. And uh, and it put it pushes an artist. Being around other artists pushes you to be better. You know what I mean? Fast. So mm-hmm. it's good. It's a good environment. It's it's good for the client. They're more comfortable. You know, you get to listen to some music while you're in here. Watch some movies. Uh, crack some jokes. Laugh. We can eat. You know. Um, we'll make it a good experience for you guys. It's, it's, you're not just going to leave with a tattoo, you know, you're going to have a good experience out of it too. And um, talk to them about how you feel your tattooing has changed from the day you went full-time to now. Because we see it, but tell them how you, you know, how okay. have you seen it in your eyes? So I definitely feel this is the most consistent I've been as in maybe the most tattoos in a short period of time, you know, because it's like back-to-back. Back. It's every day now, you know, it's... um maybe at least five six days a week so and i do see i see a lot of progression you know just in how i put my designs together or um how i approach it with the client you know um, from day one to now i'm definitely more comfortable with with the interactions with the clients the fact that i'm here at the shop you know mm-hmm. so um yeah we see it i mean from, i think more of it is consistency you know you're you're trying new things and daily and um, right and, and and one thing I like about you is that you take uh, you take our tips that we give you based on the you know we just have more experience at the shop than you. I mean, 
I we only have two years with Iconic, you know. So, um, you know, that's just a little bit of our experience. We can just give it to you, and you take it well. You take the the, the information, and I see that you grab it, and yeah. you, and you in turn do it. You do it, and you do it with your client and the tattoo, and that's right. that shows growth, man. It shows, and I'm yeah, excited, so dude. Excited to see what happens. You know what happens in the future. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely have to stay humble and, and you can't just think to yourself that you know it all and whatever somebody else knows can't help you, you know? Yeah, you, like I said, we can always learn from you and we do learn from each other. I mean, we're all good at certain things and the things we're not good at, we're trying to learn at what they're good at. Right. I mean, that's, I think that's the best thing about being in a shop that you're able to explore your options on and see how so, to learn, you know? So um, if people see this and they want to, and they see your work, what, what do you want to focus on? If they want to call you, uh, you want to contact you for a tattoo, what, are you, what would you like to, um, Mariposas. what type of tattoo would you like to do? You know, what do you like to focus on? I guess what's the, okay. so, so like I was saying about drawing, I like drawing portraits. I haven't tattooed many of them, but that's something that I would definitely like to get into tattooing some more portraits. So so that would that would be really nice, actually, you know. Just portrait to, work, portrait work, anything black and gray, anything anything that that's realistic like that, anything that has to capture an image, you know, I'm all for that. So, what about color? Uh you know, color is a really it, it, it's really nice to do. It, it's fun to do. It's super messy, <clears throat> but um, I think for color you really have to study it. It's it's there's so much to learn and there's so much to know about it that. Even just focusing on black and gray, you can do that for a lifetime and you're not going to master it like that, you know? Mm -hmm. You can always learn there. So if you're trying to learn these two different things, I think I think you're going to get stuck in the middle. You're not going to focus on this and you're not going to focus on this one. So I, I do add color here and there when a client asks for it, but um, I prefer doing black and gray. So black and gray. Okay, cool. So there you go, guys. If you guys want... Um, you guys like his work. You guys like how he vibes. It's all about energy. Contact him. Let him know. You know he's gonna be here. He's he's um, one of the four artists here. Is me, him, Josh, and Johnny. We're gonna be interviewing Johnny um, in the future as well. That's another art artist that we wanna get you guys to know about. Um, one more thing, like what what is uh what drives you to keep going on this, man? Give give us a little bit more of of you. You know what what's your passion? Why is why do you do what you do? Family, man. It's all for my family. So, so I get up and come to work, you know, because um, and I don't even see it as work anymore. I feel like I've been on, on a vacation since I quit that other job, <laughs> honestly, you that. know? That's, and that's dope. I say it all the time because it's true. I've been on know? vacation for four years. <laughs> yeah, been, I, you know, I get to make my own schedule. I get to come in on, on, on whatever time I want, the days I want. If I need some days off... You know, I just don't schedule appointments and I take them. And that's that's the freedom that I was looking for, you know, and that's what feels good. And at the same time, providing for my family is the main thing, you know, giving my uh, I have an uh, she's going to be eight, eight year old daughter and one on the way. So providing for them is my main focus, you know, giving them opportunities that I didn't have growing up and um, just uh, establishing something for them in the future, you know, that also things that i didn't have so it's cool man i like that see i like i like that he has a purpose i like that he has dedication that's what we see i mean he fits well into the team so far uh, we haven't beefed at anything yet uh, we'll see what happens in the future says being a fantoche <laughs> <laughs> uh any other questions we want to know any other I mean, comments how can they reach you if they want to book yeah an how can they reach you what's so, the best way to reach you right now if you want to book an appointment with me the best way is a DM through Instagram. Um, just let me know what you're looking to get. If you have any reference photos, send those over. Uh, the area that you want to get tattooed, all that stuff helps, you know. Just reach out, you know, and uh, um, if I need you to send over some stuff, I'll let you guys know. But, yeah. Nice, man. Cool. Well, you got any other things you want to say? It was good. It was good uh, that you wanted to do this because I know a lot of people are shy to be on camera. I mean, we're barely getting over it. Um, we'll be doing more of these interviews. Like uh, Ricardo said, we are going to try to do one with Johnny as well. So you guys can meet Johnny. Um, <clears throat> and then we'll be interviewing other business owners as well, right? Yeah, so now we're going to be really active on this. We figure, you know, we, we really delayed this. We should have been... We should have been... 
having a lot more but now we're gonna focus this is this is gonna be up pretty soon and we're gonna our focus here on the um, IQ project is basically knowledge IQ stands for knowledge right um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna interview people that we feel can bring some type of value to you so if you're willing to you want to start a business we'll bring in people that have some businesses going I'm not saying they're gonna be <clears throat> like super balling or something, but at least they're doing it so that you have, maybe that's all you need, you know, just to hear from somebody that they just fucking did it. And maybe that's what you need. And that's what we're trying to inspire people to, to do something. So we're going to have, uh, from different Elon businesses. Musk. Elon Musk. Yeah. We're going to have Elon Musk pretty soon. I, I just got to, you know, get the terms ready. He wants a little bit more than I can afford. <laughs> Jeff Bezos is gonna be here. Uh, no, that was too cocky, man. This, this man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but just you know, normal people that are just doing it. And if you're looking, if you're tired, it's basically because you know we grew up working for the man and we working for the company, and now we're doing our own thing. We're. And it wasn't easy. And it wasn't easy, but we're doing it, and we yeah. want to inspire that so that other people can do it and now. And sometimes we have clients that come in and they have cool stories, you know, and. Business is about people. And if you get to know people, then you'll do business with them. And so we're going to interview a lot of different people. So stay tuned. Yeah, it's going so to be cool. Business is going to be one part of it, but also we're going to try to interview other artists oh, yeah. around the area. Um, we're not the only shop around here. Just in the what, mile radius, we have like four of the shops. Yeah, so if you're an artist so, and you're checking this out <laughs> and you uh, and you tattoo in, in, in an empire, you know, hit us up. Yeah. You know? Shop owners, you know, you want to tell your story, your struggle, how you got there. <coughs> That's always nice to hear, too. Um, but I tell you, you got anything to say? Um, no, man. Thanks for the opportunity. I'm glad I'm, glad I'm here. So far, so good. And um, and I, I feel like we haven't even scratched the surface of what we could do, you know? So we're always so pushing like for hear. that. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Like and subscribe because it's going to be on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't get kicked out. Yeah. So, peace. <laughs> See you guys on the next one. Later.